My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and by now, you may have realized that all of this has happened exactly the way it was supposed to. You see, everyone who comes to the Institute does so because they feel that they are no longer in control of something important to them. But, more often than not, the problem is not that the problems we face can't be solved. The problem is that we become so afraid of failure that we refuse to see our problems from a new perspective. And so, we do the same things again and again and again. And therein, of course, we find exactly the failure we were looking for. Your life will always be a struggle, and you will always have problems. But today, you have the chance to see things differently. Even though it meant facing obstacles that seemed impossible at first, you thought outside the box, and you overcame them. Because you saw things from every angle, you understood them for what they really were. Because you kept moving forward, no matter how far off the path you were told you were headed, or how unexpected it became, you found your way. few minutes you'll be back in the real world and some part of you will say that none of this was real so how could it have really meant anything but just like the power of perspective itself it will have been as real as you believed it to be all you've got to do is wait
Hello and welcome to the Superliminal Developer Commentary. I'm Albert, Game Director of Superliminal. Myself and the rest of the team will be popping up every now and then as you play. With subtitles open, you can see who is talking and what their role on the game is. Patent pending Somnoscope technology provides safe and effective dream therapy while you rest in the comfort of our flagship clinic. Located right next to the secondary overflow parking lot at the University Medical Center. Somnuscult will make your dreams come true. Hi, my name's Chris. I was the producer and designer on Superliminal. Hi, this is Will O'Neill, and I was the writer on Superliminal. Okay, so that very beginning of Superliminal is actually one of the last parts we finished. Throughout development, we created so many different introductions to the game. Not all of them were cutscenes, like that one, but we ended up feeling that that in-game video sequence offered a really smooth on-ramp that let us set the framework. A lot of people ask about how the resizing mechanic works. The concepts are actually quite easy. To keep an object looking the same, assume if we move the object twice as far away, it just needs to be twice as big. It's all proportional. Interestingly enough, this also works no matter what field of view you use. The hard part of this mechanic isn't the actual resizing. It's trying to figure out where the object needs to be. To do this, you need to test a weirdly shaped object with a weirdly shaped background and try to find the right ratio for the object to be big enough to not touch anything while keeping everything accurate and optimized. Hey, this is Matt. I did the music and sound. This very first jazz piece in the game is called I Wonder, and if it sounds at all familiar to you, that's because you just heard its melody and chord progression in the Somnoscope TV jingle back at the start of the game, which I called Smooth Wonder. Hi, I'm Logan, and I'm level designer on Superliminal. A difference with the main resizing mechanic in this game is how much freedom it gives the player. This puzzle is a good example. In most puzzle games, if you put an object on a button in this scenario, the object doesn't need to be moved anymore. The key to unlock the door removes the key from the problem space. But unfortunately, in our game, you can just turn around and grab the object from any distance away. Therefore, we've gotten good at adding barriers in many places so people won't carry an object through all puzzles forever. Confirmed. You can move freely, interact with surrounding objects, and listen to messages from your patient care team. Please note that I am the standard orientation... Hi, my name is Alex, and, and I performed gameplay programming on Superliminal. ...to remind you that I am not a part of your patient... When I joined the project, there weren't really any menus except the absolute bare minimum to get the player into the game. And there wasn't any keyboard support either. So the first order of business was to add proper mouse and keyboard support to the title and pause menus. The hardest part was supporting switching between the two on the fly, because you never know when the player is going to do it, and it could lock them out of the game. With that foundation laid, I started working on controller support. In terms of the menus, there wasn't much work to do. The pad basically acts like a keyboard. But gameplay was quite a different story. As we approached launch, we all agreed that controller support wasn't quite up to par, During and so we shipped without it, adding it around a month after launch. Due to realizing that this is a dream. Evidence, I have In the end, I made it so looking around accelerates the longer the stick is pressed, and behaves differently based on whether you are looking vertically or horizontally, and also while you are holding an object. Probably the biggest change was a quote-unquote auto-lock feature, which draws the focus to a grabbable object as your cursor gets closer to it. All these changes culminated in controllers feeling much more accurate and satisfying. Hi there, I'm Steve, I'm the art director of Superliminal. One of our main visual touchstones for this section 
centers around a couple of silly questions. What would someone in the early 90s dream up as a futuristic testing facility? And how could they build that on a shoestring budget but with infinite time? I feel like those two questions were ones we actually asked ourselves more than once during the process of making this game. At the Pierce Institute, patient safety is a keynote in our corporate priority tetrahedron. A variable degree of force can and will be authorized to ensure patient safety. Please return to the orientation When pathway. we were playtesting, we realized that players were getting tripped up on different aspects of the resize mechanic. So we try to make each puzzle in this level teach a specific action. The cheese puzzle is our way of forcing players to make something from very small to very big, and the puzzle after that is the opposite. This broken window puzzle is to teach you how to make things small and fit through a hole, but at a distance, so you can't simply walk up to it. All environments perceived during eyelids should reflect a typical mental state. If you believe your mental state was compromised by Somnasculpt, please provide a comprehensive, rational explanation in your post-procedural survey. Completed surveys may be eligible for a gift card. We had this looping hallway for a while, but it was very nondescript and players got confused on where they were and they would get turned around. So our artist Steve helped mock up some windows and landmarks so people can tell where they are. Immediately, we found that playtesters weren't getting lost anymore and understood the moment. Our core game mechanic is so novel that we immediately drew comparisons to other quasi-sci-fi puzzle games. And, since our game is about playing with and subverting expectations, we wanted to lean into that and start the first level with a kind of test chamber aesthetic, and immediately break that going forward. Narratively, this space is what Dr. Pierce planned to have his dream therapy program look like before it all went wrong. Please stand by for polite recognition on your completion of the Somnasculpt orientation. You did it! To maximize the time allotted for your therapeutic journey, please do not delay in proceeding through the final doorway as indicated. <laughs> 